Algadu, the program that changed the world. Physics simulation technology was now available for everyone, and with a simple user interface, it took over the world. Now it's the program for marble races, algo cyclones, and wait. Is this the correct list? Oh, I guess that's what they use this physics simulator for now. This program has been free for over six years, allowing anyone to use it. However, this decision is also why Algadoo is in trouble and why it may disappear from the world soon. You heard of Algadoo, right? Yep, I've used it. You probably use it. Many people have in this community. This 2D physics program was developed by Emil Anorfeld back in 2018. Originally for education, this program has now become the staple for marble races and algathons, with more random stuff on Algabox. But we're not talking about that, we're talking about Algadoo. Did you know that Algadoo has not had an update in 6 years? 6 years! The last update for Algadoo happened in 2013, and I don't know about you, but 6 years is a long time. I mean, do you know any marble racers off the top of your head back in 2013? You're probably proud of Kerry KH, but how about anyone else? I can't even think of anyone else other than Carrie. Let me know down below if you can. Well, it's coming to haunt them if 64 bit threatening to destroy this very program you thought our lives on. And I don't know about you, but that's a bad thing for us, Algorox, and the entire community as a whole. We gotta go back up 11 years to see the full picture. Before the big names? Yep, before the mile races, and even before Carrie's videos. All the way to 2018? The year when email created the very program we all know and love today. Now, you may not know this, but it was not called Algadoo during this time. It was fun. A combination of physics and fun. Just like how Algadoo is a combination of algorithm and do. I guess fun was a little too inappropriate for little kids. Although an algathon sounds a lot better than funthon. Anyways, email made this project for his master's thesis. It was released to the public under, you guessed it, FUN. This program started getting traction after this guy posted a video on YouTube about him using FUN and it went viral. You can still see it on YouTube, which is kind of cool. Nostalgia. With that, in May of the same year, the project would start to rise to the scene with email bringing the project to no other than Kenneth Bowden. Let me explain. When I said that email sent this project to Kenneth Bowden, email's former supervisor at the exact same university where email was working on the project, which company did Kenneth found? I'll give you a hint, it starts with the letter A. It was Algorox, the same exact company that owns Algodoo here in 2019. Yeah, this is the company where you can blame the lack of updates. Algorox, or more specifically, Algorox Simulation AB, was founded in 2007, and with that, we have the game to fun, or algodoo, whatever you call it. Now, this is 2009, 10 years ago from today. Algorox just released the program, and they changed it to algodoo. Woohoo! Now, this is the point where the story diverges a little bit. Algorox develops two different systems, one for consumers and another for education. Now, many regular people, they use regular algodoo, Schools and universities, however, they might use the education version. These two different versions have differences in their demographics. Now, we have a problem this time period, as there's no information on the internet about this part of Algodoo's history. I reached out to email NRFL about their opinion on this, but they did not respond to a request for an interview. I'll be speculating for this time period. During this time, Algodoo 2.0.0 and Algodoo for Education were two separate editions. Algadoo for consumers had a higher price than Algadoo for education when compared by unit. This is because the education version was skipped to educators by bulk. The way it works is that a company will sell you a key to a program. Algadoo will give you a trial, and once that trial is done, you have to pay if you want it to continue. Once you buy the program, Algadoo will give you the key so you can activate your program. Remember, this was the time before Algadoo became free. Consumers and educators have different needs. Consumers generally purchase one key and buy it for themselves, while educators purchase money for the students. Having two different systems helps both parties as Algora secures many orders, educators get discount, and regular consumers supplement the growth. Windows did this before with their Windows operating system, having one for regular consumers and one for work. This has been the system for four years, and this leads us to 2013. This is the time now where Algodoo starts to go downhill. Remember the business model Algorox is using for Algodoo? 
Well, this is also the time where al Gadoo becomes free and development is halted. Many people think that making it free was a good thing, but in reality, it's one of the worst things that happened to the program. It may be shocking, but al Gadoo becoming free was a sign of bigger trouble. To show you why, let's show how companies make money off programs. You pay for things like games, music, and so much more. However, there's also a lot more of those things that are free. Now, having free games and music is not that big of a deal if you're just starting out and want to get your hands into programming or music production. But the more time you invest into it, the more money you need to make in order to make it worth your time. Nobody wants to make something they work so hard on just for kicks. So this is why people have to charge money for these. And if they don't, they run ads or microtransactions. The way most people think about software isn't realistic and sometimes it's downright wrong. I'll do look good at the surface back in 2011, but cracks were starting to form. In 2013, Algadoo became free, which left a lot of people wondering if it's discontinued or not. For most people, the way you think about apps is build ones and then cut the profits. But with software, if it doesn't get updates, it'll stagnate. The reason why Algadoo has survived for this long is because people have no other choice for a physics simulator that's easy to use. This is the exception, not the norm. I don't know about you, but I'd rather have someone maintain something that I depend on. If you're okay with owning software with all its flaws, we'll get to that. You can't expect people to fix bugs forever for free or pay one's programs. The money and incentives have to be there. If you're saying that they didn't need to stop updating it because they did fine before, well, that's where you're wrong. Algodoo was started by only one person, as we saw before, and the company who made and maintained it used to have one person who was working on it before he left. To combat slow sales, you have several options on how you can keep making money off the app you made. You can try to bring in more consumers, keep updating, try marketing it, and hope it works. Sometimes it does work, but the app store doesn't really care about their apps as much as, say, YouTube. Eventually, everybody who will need your app will already have it, which will give you no more money. This is what Algorox has been trying to do with Algodoo before, and they're kind of lucky, as it was people like Kerry KH and other early users who did most of the advertising for them. However, it became free in 2013, so there had to be something else that caused it to stop. Another option on the table is that you can try to introduce as many paid updates as you can. This may also work, but it's a pitfall many developers fall into. The goal is to put as much content to the update, enough so people will buy, but not too much so you can't do it again. Eventually, most people will be content, leading to the same problem that happened with the first option. As you can see, it's not possible for many developers to make an app without having these problems. Some people just don't care about developers, but this can be a dangerous mindset to have. Think about it this way, your might will be much harder if the dApps you use on a daily basis were made by developers who just want to make a quick buck. They say that developers should always keep updating their apps, answer people, but in order to do that, there needs to be an incentive. This is where subscriptions come in. You can focus on keeping your customers rather than doing whatever it takes to get them. The money does not come from the initial purchase, but from how long the user pays for it. Some might be thinking that it's only for magazines and newspapers, but plenty of apps use it now. Although many people were initially outraged by certain apps switching from pay once to subscriptions. They avoid the many problems that the previous options above over time, it may start costing more, but that's a trade-off you get for more regular updates, support, and a better user experience. Algorox desperately needs a new model for Algodoo, or a variant of it, as incompatibility is on its doorstep for Mac users, and possibly Windows users. At the time of writing, there is only one month left before Algodoo will become incompatible with macOS Catalina, the first operating system by Apple that will only run 64-bit. Windows users may think that because it only affects Mac users, they don't need to worry, but that is wrong. If Algorox sits back and lets this happen, Algodoo will have a shrunk user base, and that can make the cancellation of the entire platform more likely, or at the very least, shutting down Algobox, the sharing platform for Algodoo scenes. However, Algorox has already updated the iOS version of Algodoo to keep with iOS updates, so that doesn't mean they don't know about this. Algodoo is a 32-bit program, and for the most part, the operating systems of Windows and Macs are 64-bit. For a long time, 64-bit operating systems have been able to run 32-bit software effortlessly, ignoring the fact that 32-bit software can't utilize the full potential of 64-bit OSs. However, macOS Catalina will be breaking this tradition by only allowing 32-bit software onto the system. The reasons for this are complicated, and I'm not going to get into that in this video. You can check the link for an article by Apple in the description on our tab. But basically, the technology Apple will be using in the next update will only work on 64-bit apps. And that means 32-bit apps may not work in this update, so not allowing it to keep a good user experience. All this to show that Algodoo not being updated for the past 6 years and being incompatible soon is not because of Algorox's fault or the fault of Apple. 
It's a complicated string of incentives, economics, and consumer behavior. We're at a time in history where technology is moving at an ever-increasing rate. This can be good for people who jump on early and can move the whole world forward. However, we also need to recognize when we need to move on and try something new. Some people may complain if Algorox becomes a subscription service where you rent out the software instead of buying it. But if you want Algorox to listen to us, to keep updating the platform, answer our messages, and keep it compatible with future technology, we can't have something that's only good for us. We need it to be good with developers as well. Because if you want Algorox to be in for the long game, you have to fit the bill for that. Consider sharing this with a friend and subscribe to keep up with more videos on this topic.